But away from the noise and hype of the Indy Racing League, New Zealand's top motor racer is a rather shy fellow, avoiding as much attention as possible. Still with a book to plug, he had to talk. Sean Summerfield has followed Scott's career, but always from a distance until today. This is worse than waiting at the altar with someone. Hey, How's it yeah, going? It's a strange thing to be face to face with someone you've reported on for the last seven years, but never met. Especially someone like Scott Dixon, New Zealand's top race car driver, who's also famous for disappearing at interview time. There is a reputation you have for not really being too fond of doing interviews, and the nickname The Phantom. The Phantom, yeah, that, that, uh, I think that came back out in the book, didn't it, with, uh, with Crusher, but definitely in my earlier days and, and still a bit now. I always say I get paid to do my media and, and sponsor, sponsor stuff, and I drive for free. Today is one of the days Dixon has to talk. He's promoting his biography. Some put his reluctance for interviews down to shyness, but it wasn't always that way. Are you nervous? Is your heart pumping in your chest when you're going fast? Or? No, and then when you go sideways, you're always heading for the arm go. But growing up on track and in the public eye quickly changed the boulders brass schoolboy. I think, you know, especially going through that 13 to 16, 17 was, was quite tough. You know, there was a lot of pressure. You know, I was very young and, and you know, it was, it was always very hard, I think, in New Zealand at that time to know whether you're actually ever going to make it. You're spending a lot of people's money, um, you know, expecting you to do well. And, and you know, it, it is very tough when you messed up. You got a lot of flack for it and things like that. And I think it's sort of, you know, when I closed up and then didn't want to talk about too many things. Dixon was still 13 years old when the honeymoon ended. Definitely had some major help from behind with a major shot up the back end of that little Nissan. Because it was the first time, I think, was, was very difficult and not knowing, or nobody really knowing what uh, to expect or, you know, whether it was right or wrong. Um, but, you know, that, that now you look at back at, you know, those memories and you have, you have quite a good laugh, you know, sort of crawling out of the car with a tear in the eye and uh, a floral cushion tied to your ass. It's pretty funny, I think. So Who chose the cushion? It was one that we had in our camper van, you know. I did, it's what mum picked, I guess, the colour. So, obviously, it wasn't the first one I would have picked. But mum's pillows aside, Dixon, even back then, had it all sorted. What's the long term aim? You're starting off in Formula V? Um, go to Ford, then get graded for my licence, hopefully again, and go to Atlantic, hopefully Indy cars or something. And I'm actually surprised I said that, which is, which is quite strange, but there you go, that was fate. Maybe I was sending out a message to everybody. That is the question that's always asked, though, when are you going to go to Formula One? Do you want to go to Formula One? Do you sometimes feel that's almost a, a criticism that you haven't achieved all you could? Yeah, no. I think, you know, it's always important to set goals. You know, that's what life's about is trying to, you know, accomplish things. And, and uh, you know, Formula One's always going to be on my mind. And, yeah, I will be disappointed if I never make it. And, and, you know, as I get older, it seems further and further away. But it's not like Dixon is struggling. His IndyCar career, including one championship win, has made him one of New Zealand's richest sportsmen. But he really does earn his pay. Whoa! White walls the tires. Brushing the walls of oval tracks at over 350 kilometres an hour. The first time I spoke to uh, Schumacher was in Monza, and he said, "You guys are crazy. Like, you know, I'd never do that stuff." And uh, you know, for us, it's just what we do. It's, it's, um, you know, I think once you get in the car, it's totally different. I think.